Hello and welcome back to Final Fantasy VIII Remaster Commentary Playthrough. We are aboard the Ragnarok for the first time um, with Renoa and Squall. So in this section we are going to have to fight off against um, a few enemies in here known as Propagators. Uh, we've actually had their card kind of spoil these enemies in the game. So they kind of look like this. And the premise of these dudes is that they're going to be color coded. So there's going to be two of each color on the ship for a total of eight propagators. How you figure this out and how to defeat this area is um, you'll have to end up heading towards the bridge and pulling this message off of a board saying um, very confusing statement of like if you beat monster A and beat monster B then monster A will come back to life and you know but the, the strategy is to defeat um, both you know, monsters AA. So monsters of the same color need to be defeated in order to die forever. And that's exactly the puzzle in here. Me back then, 1999, had no idea that, that was a thing, so I kept fighting these things until um, I kind of, you know, put it together. Now, as before, as I stated, they are weak to death, so hit them with death spell. Uh, you could status uh, junction it. And it'll hit just the same. So now we're going to continue. So Squall's still too proud to admit, you know. Even though he was saying all the lovey-dovey stuff when she was knocked out. It's just his character flaws, you know. It is what it is. Alright, so we're going to run into our first propagator here. So you'll see this one's purple. So there's um, a green one, a yellow one, a purple one, and a red one. Uh, you'll have to kill you know, both colors at the same time um, in order to get rid of them for good. Otherwise, they'll just keep on respawning. And these dudes will run after you, so you have to be kind of quick. Uh, I would probably turn off times three speed just to get used to the speed of their movement. And, I mean, that's how quick they can be. So you imagine times three, they'll just zoom right at you. So high, higher level propagators will actually drop some pretty interesting things. Um, if you need to stock up on Kiragas, Asunas, Life, go ahead and do so. But for the most part, the fight's straightforward. They do a lot of damage. But like that, they are weak to death. So just get an attack off and it's over and done with. And Tonberry actually just picked up a very good ability for me finally. And that's call shop. So now we can just call any shop that we've been to from the menu. So as long as you visit the shop at least once, this will now forever be in your inventory um, from the call shop ability. And from here, I mean, you know, you don't have to visit those places anymore. You can buy what you need. If you're trying to do magics or you're trying to refine, you know, this is just a much simpler way to do it. And then you can uh, really customize your GFs at this point and, you know, kind of get exactly what you want to get um, at this point in the game. There will be other shops too that we open up, uh, so don't be, you know, don't think that that's it. There's still more to do, a lot more to do actually. So inside of here will be, I think, a yellow one. Ah, uh, green. Okay, but you see, there's a save point behind him. But we are not. We're not after that. We're after purple. So this guy just run right by him, and then you'll see the second purple. Yeah. 
and Odin actually does help us. So you see, even though they're they're listed as a like a semi-boss battle here, they don't give experience, but they do give 5 AP. But they can also be attacked as if they are a random encounter. Because uh, usually Odin's not going to show up against boss fights. So they kind of, I don't know what kind of like designation they really put these guys as. Um, kind of sucks that they don't give experience, but oh well. I just want to make sure you have some learning, some good stuff here. Okay. So then you'll see that with purple gone, the other purple is not going to revive anymore. So we've officially killed purple for good. Um, and then if you run back up here, and you'll see red. The red one spawned where we initially uh, came from. And like I said, this is what they do. They're just, they status attack you. I think the worst thing they can actually pull on you is death. So a yellow one is in here. So just make sure you're always exploring the ship. And then uh, you'll see that this life draw point has opened up. So head back over here and fight the red one. And all propagators have the same uh, draw. There's nothing important to pull from them that we already don't have. Okay. So then you want to continue to the left. And you'll see the green one is in here, guarding the little deck. If you come downwards though from it, you'll actually activate a shortcut from the beginning. So then what you want to do is you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do here. I generally just go for the green one since he's in this little little maintenance area. Nothing to it. And then save your game, you know, you don't want to have an accidental death problem here and have to redo all that, right? And come upstairs, go back towards the green one right here. Then with the green one, go ahead and head down and attack the yellow one. You can choose to mug these guys and they'll, uh, they'll give you eight wizard stones for mugging them or you can just take their stones, which I think the stones are kind of better because they, they drop some high level material there. Uh, once we get the proper refinement, we'll actually be able to turn these stones like the Aura Stone and some other stones we pulled off these guys. Uh... Well, there will be like a meteor stone. There will be like a lot of magics that we haven't seen yet. You can use them as regular items uh, from your item menu when you're in battles in order to use it like a magic. So then with that yellow guy defeated, you want to head over to this left door. And this guy will bum rush you. And then just kill him. That's it. So that will be all the propagators defeated. And this is the message where you would figure out if you're having a, if you're struggling with these guys and you have no idea how to deal with them, this is what kind of tells you how to do how to do it. They tell us we have eight monsters to beat. They seem immortal, but they cannot blah blah blah. And they get really confusing with the letter stuff here.
And yes, so Renault will spell it out for us. Perfect. Okay. So, saddest thing I gotta do here is I cannot post this video with a song that's about to play. And it kind of it breaks my heart because, I, I mean, this, this is one of those top tier songs that just make the Final Fantasy franchise the Final Fantasy franchise, right? It's up there with, you know, to Xanarkin, uh, from Xanarkin, whatever it is, and, you know, Tifa's theme, Eris theme, stuff like that. I mean, this, this is one of those legendary songs. Um, the song title is called Eyes on Me, and it's sung by a woman named Fei Wong. So give it a look up. I can't post it on here. Because uh, I don't, I just don't know how to deal with uh, copyright stuff right now, right? But if I make a mistake and, you know, I could have posted or whatever, I do apologize. Uh, but as far as I know, everyone that I've ever seen make these videos, they usually always block out the sound here. And, you know, we have to just kind of sit blankly with um, no kind of idea what's going on other than dialogue between these two. So there's going to be a weird skip. Uh, when I come back and when you see this video, so there's going to be a giant gap section missing where Renault and Squall are basically having like a, like their feelings thrown out to each other. Um, Renault and is going to like, there's going to be a gravity situation where they're floating around and Renault is basically just going to be cuddling up on Squall and telling her her fears about becoming a sorceress and all sorts of stuff's going to happen. Squall's going to assure her that, you know, no matter what, He'll always be there for her, sorceress or not. And then um, the the music's playing in the background with lyrics, so you know it's the reason why I can't feature that part. So it's a really nice section. I mean, play the game up to that point, you'll really love it. It's a memorable scene for sure. Uh, we'll get in contact with the ground units from Estar, and you know they'll tell us how to activate the ship into flying mode, and that the ship's been missing for like decades. <laughs> Um, and then once we once we land, we'll actually uh, lose Renoa for just a little bit. So, like I said, the weird cut's gonna come. Uh, but thanks for watching this part. And then I'll return, and the rest of the video will be synced to this one. So sorry for that. But look up the song; it's amazing. And thanks for watching. Okay, so thankfully the PlayStation actually has a way where it blocks the scenes, so I guess anything that would be copywritten um, kind of blocks itself anyway, uh, which is great. But it, it would still be an incredible, like, lengthy skip, you know? So there was a giant scene there, um, you know, Renault is a sorceress, uh, and she's got to be contained, you know, says so the people of Estar so that her powers won't spread and cause more damage or anything like that. And Squall has pretty much admitted that he has fallen for Renault at this point. But he's still in his head and will not say it out loud. So again, with Ultimecia and this time compression stuff. Uh, so from here, head into the ship, go on to the left side, and you'll enter, you know, a little seating area.
So Quest is beating him down right now, telling him he dummy. Yep, exactly. Why? You know, why did you risk your life to save her if you were just gonna let her go, you know? Stupid stupid stuff, right? Excuse me, are we flying? That's funny. I'm gonna head up to the bridge. And Zelfie knows how to fly a friggin' ship. <laughs> it's so good. So we got our next piece here where we gotta go to the Sorceress's Memorial. So just like Balam Garden, forward back. Uh, now we have access to the entire world. This is amazing. I always love pulling Ragnarok. It's like, you know, I, I get sad at times though because I know the end game's coming. Um, but this is amazing, right? You got an airship in the game and it has, and it comes complete with cool music. So it replaces the world map music with this. Anyway, where you want to head to, and these uh, blinking red dots are going to be where you um, left your other ships. So this will be the Long Garden right here, and obviously the Ragnarok that we're on right now. So go ahead and head over to the Sorceress Memorial, because you don't want to... You can you can actually skip getting Renoa for a really long time, and then, you know, she's going to go backwards with leveling, and we don't want that. So land. If you don't want to face off against anything, make sure you put on your Encounter None. So we can actually set up our GFs again. So some scenes are going to play out in this and we're going to get the next section of like what we're going to do for Endgame. Um, but there's going to be a lot of side quests from here, so I'm going to let the scene play out, uh, give my closing comments on this video, and then we will continue with Ragnarok Exploration.
And then we're going to get the dialogue pieces for uh, the intro, you know, when the, the whole opera singing thing was going on. So this is where this all ties in. Pretty neat stuff here. So Adia's storyline has completed. Um, you know, she was a prominent enemy for us for pretty much half of the game. And then it switched over to, you know, Sorceress Ultimecia, the Sorceress from the future, that is actually controlling a whole bunch of things and making everyone miserable. But with Adia free from the Sorceress' powers and transferred over to Renoa, now we have Renoa and Sorceress Adele in our present time to deal with, and with the ultimate objective of going after Ultimecia. Um, which is where Zell butted in and, you know, let us know that a guy named Kiros, yes, that Kiros, delivered a message to hire C to uh, meet up at Esthar in, all, in order to start the plans on how to get us into the future so that we may defeat Ultimecia there. And then pretty much how you want to progress with that is you'll come over to Esthar and there's going to be like a little landing pad right over here. So with the Ragnarok, if you just hit X, you'll land on the air station stuff. Uh, there's a lot of cities that have this feature. Fisherman's Horizon for one, if you just float over it, hit X, you'll literally park the Ragnarok where Martin was sitting. And... If you don't want to approach it from that way, you can always just take the other way and just walk. So park it on the outside and walk your way over to the middle section of the building here. And then just run your way back to the Presidential Palace. You are going to run into some very high level and difficult enemies from here on out though. Uh, the SR region has changed completely. So think of it as like Final Fantasy VI, you know, you have the World of Balance and then you have the World of Ruin. So SR has basically become the world of ruin here, where enemy monsters are going to be a lot more difficult to deal with. Uh, you'll see behemoths, malroros, elnoils, all sorts of stuff. And it's really good for item collection if you need it for weapons. And you know, this, this endgame content thing, this is kind of what we're going to do. You know, we're going to be getting some tying up uh, loose ends with side quests from other villages. Um, some of more obscure ones like the, the alien side quest. Uh, Oval Lake. Um, there's going to be a hidden point out in the map in the corners uh, where we can actually go get GF uh, Bahamut. And that's really what we're going to be doing. We're going to be focusing a lot, a lot, a lot on side questing and getting materials in order, you know, to, to fully get 100% out of this game. Anyway, that's going to conclude this part. And I'm going to have to map out how exactly I want to approach the end game stuff because we can get really chaotic with it and just kind of do everything in order. Or we can just go, you know, absolutely ballistic and, um, you know, just do things out of order sequences and I don't know, you know, it, it just depends on how you want to do it. But this little area right here, this is a hidden spot in the world map. You can see it has no designation. So I'll just keep this bottom left section in mind. And I'm actually going to go park the Balaam and uh, begin my, my thought process on how I want to tackle these side objectives. 
and the garden will always be available still. You know, you can still use it to get around if you want that to be your mode of transportation. It's not a big deal. It's just that you won't be able to go to S-Star uh, with Wolong Garden ever. All right, with that, I think we learned a lot of things and we are approaching the end game now. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.